Howdy folks, welcome back, and you are tuning into another Will It Run episode on Trains with Shane. This is actually a unit that was supposed to have been done last week, but it arrived a little bit too late to get the video put together and recorded out, so we did the E6 video instead. So, what do we have here? This is an eBay purchase. It was listed as a Kato chassis with an Atlas shell and an ESU Loc sound decoder installed. The price wasn't horrible. Um, if I were going to purchase, let's just say an Atlas SD60 complete and an ESU Loc sound, I probably would have been in 150, 160 bucks. This was far less than that, so I figured I'd take a shot on it, and that was the only bidder, and I won the auction, and here it sits. Uh, I have not opened this case yet, although I did obviously get it out of the shipping box. It did come with the Loc sound card that they come on which shows it as a 73100 Loke Sound Select Direct Micro. And these are $85, 90-ish dollars if you were to buy one brand new. And as you can see, it comes with all the happy instructions. I've never installed a Loke Sound decoder myself. I have installed standard drop-in DCC control only decoders before but never a loke sound it's something that I might try one of these days I might not I'm, I'm a chicken when it comes to, to trying that kind of thing so here's what we have let's see what we got looks like it started life possibly as a SD40 that's always good the shells a little bit high on the chassis that may just be due to shipping looks like we're pushed in a little bit on the handrails. Hopefully easy to fix. Looks like maybe some detail parts have fallen off. But the horn or a, a bell or something. Maybe something. That looks like a horn chime as well. Let's see if we can I'm gonna turn it out over this to try to catch any bits and pieces. I do not know how successful that was, although the parts managed to capture whatever little piece that is. And the horn chime fell out onto the board. We'll put that back in here. Okay, so first impressions, it looks pretty decent. I think this is just a, a standard unmodified Atlas shell. I think they just come like this. Tiny bit of weathering on the roof, maybe a little scratch building there. This sit down on the chassis. Because if it won't, the coupler height will be off. It's definitely a Kato mechanism. Just a little gap here. Just squeezing gently. Because I don't want to break anything. I've got a gap here as well. Although... I'm unsure if that is the handrails just not fitting up properly or the shell to chassis fit. It's, as you can see, there's a little movement here. That can be rectified with CA glue later if we need to, or maybe some clearancing. Our number boards here look good. It gets worse on the other side. the 
handrails and walkway are way down. Let's break out some tools here. Let's see if we can remedy that. I'm just gonna try to push up. That was a satisfying click. It certainly looks better there. That's fitting into place pretty good now. Okay, looks like that. That probably just happened in shipping and jostling, stuff like that. Honestly, it looks pretty good. I'm a big fan of Kansas City Southern, as you guys know. Got some decent detail there. I am not sure if this is a custom paint or if it's a a standard KCS Atlas thing. Honestly, all things being similar, I would have preferred the original Kato SD40-2 in the KCS Grey Ghost scheme, but it is what it is. It's what we have and we will, and we will take it. It looks like our horn broke off up there. Sand filler hatch. No applied details or anything. Yeah, that's that's loose, but not. Looks like it's just loose in the holes, which is good. So that means a little bit of CA or something could probably help cure that. A little bit. fibers and stuff here and there but it looks no worse for wear um, that's kind of all secondary to how's it gonna run is it gonna run so let's get this thing onto our test track as we do and find out what it does and what it doesn't do hopefully it just does let me get set up and I will see you guys in a second all right, guys, we are back on the tiny test track. Same setup as last week. DCC++ EX, SRCP on the iPhone, running over my home network and Wi-Fi. I'm not connected directly to the DCC++ EX base station, so I can continue to use my, my phone and my network services and stuff as needed. There are videos explaining how to do all that on the internet. I haven't had the time to put one together. So, we've got our thing programmed to our road number, 731. I did kind of cheat, and I tried it on 3, and nothing happened. So, we're on 731. Let's press F0 for lights. We do have lights, very blue LED. Really, these are often like that. Let's see if we've got sound. F1. Very audible bell. F2 for horn. Easy enough. With low sound, you are usually able to do whatever length of horn blast you want based on how long you have the button depressed or how long the digital key is active on an LCD type display. Uh, F8 or F9 should be our startup sequence. As you guys saw, I've got the handy booklet here, but I I can't read. I'm just illiterate. Let's see. Let's see, those are the CVs. Let's Let's see what our key sounds are. Bell, dynamic regular so sound on and off is F8. So let's try F8, see if we get a startup sequence.
She sings like a turbocharged EMD should. I believe the SD60 is a 20 cylinder. I don't remember if it's a 645 or a 710. Guys, if you know off the top of your head, bleep bleep it down in the comment section. Let's see if this thing moves. We've got about the same amount of track in front of us as behind us. She moves forward. She moves backward. Say that fade again. Pretty good. I'd say we have a winner here, guys. I didn't check the rear light. Is the rear light functional? It is. Looks like it's using the standard, like very warm incandescent LED which I actually prefer over the bluish white. Um, well, this one was fairly short and sweet, guys. I'm glad this worked. I, let's turn off track power here. You hear those spitter valves going, that's so cool. Part of me wants to take the shell off and see how they did the installation if they had to grind anything to fit the speaker enclosure I don't know if it's down here in the fuel tank area a lot of people like to do it over one of the trucks which is frankly a much easier installation I would imagine because you don't have to route wires around the very thin long hood or make channels for them in the metal chassis Dan Cortapassi has some pretty good videos of him installing some DCC decoders on, I think, our Atlas, an SD7 and a GP7 for his little N-Scale Siren Creek layout project that he's building, which I am totally, like, following hardcore. It is it's so cool. He hand-laid the entire track. I think he's a psychopath for doing that because it's dual gauge. He's got a standard and narrow end gauge locomotive, so there's dual gauge track, dual gauge turnouts, and the the man is is a um, what would you call him a crazed genius? Um, I, I don't know. I really love his content. He seems like a really great fellow. I watch him all the time. Um, he had to do some chassis modification on the units that he did, but he was using loke sound decoders that weren't direct fit because the atlas units that he had were a little bit older and i don't think that loke sound had decoders that were direct slip-ins for those particular units although there were decoders and stuff that were available in the work and he just had to do some modifications to make them fit i am certainly not that skilled like I said I'm a weenie and I'm afraid of breaking stuff although I'm becoming more confident in my abilities as I do this as anyone would be hopefully so maybe one of these days we will do a loke sound install on something I have an SD 35 I think that is Atlas. It was an unnumbered custom paint unit that I got from a, a friend of mine who's local. And we might do that. We might do something else. I really need a good four axle switcher for a project that I'm scheming on. That and some of the 
turnouts on the N-Scale Rescue layout that I'm working on are a little bit too tight on the turnout for a six axle road switcher. What happens is it, the, the front truck will not follow the, the turnout. It'll keep following the, the base direction, but the rear truck will follow the turnout if the switch is thrown to diverge. And it's coming off of a, a, not a real, real steep, but a steep-ish enough curve that what I think it's doing is it's the the angle of the, the engine, I think, is just binding up the front truck to where it won't pivot far enough to follow the switch if thrown. Something that I don't have to deal with if I'm using a four-axle switcher, which I've proven by testing four axle switchers on that particular portion of that layout. That's the they're the that's the only switch on the layout that does that. The problem is that it's part of the that inside loop of hand laid flex track that I don't want to mess with. I could the only way I could try to remedy that and that is the section where I've got all of those crossovers and things going in the very center. Go watch one of my rescue layout videos and you guys will see. I redone all of that already and I really don't want to mess with it now that I'm that done with it. I just, I won't run a locomotive on that inside loop is all, at least not a six axle. I'll, I'll stick to a four axle for something. For that anyway so guys I want to thank you for sticking with me uh, I've seen some good comments on the last video already and I want to thank you guys for the warm welcome back I hope that you all are doing well and I want to thank you for joining me on another will it run episode on trains with Shane and until next time be good to yourselves and each other stay safe I bid you peace. Bye-bye.